I have written special articles about Mar Mar uh, Mar Gregorios, Father V.C. Samuel, Mar Ostatius. Those people who influenced me as teachers, gurus. Yeah, I know there are some differences of opinion, methodological difference between the priority aspect. Mar Ostatius priority mission mission. Also Trinitarian theology sharing all these things. Mar Gregorius is more philosophical. You know. Yeah. Mar Father Samuel giving importance to cultural heritage of India. The mm. heritage of India. He has written an article in Purogi then about that. Mm. The cultural heritage of India. Yeah. He is interested in that. The theology of the India so the Indian church should be fully Indian, not an outside. Yeah. So you, yeah. you let's let's <laughs> talk about that portion, especially yeah. when you use that phrase yeah. cultural heritage yeah. of yeah. India. Yeah. 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 Now, and you talked about he liked, uh, Father yeah. V.C. Yeah. liked about an Indian church. Do you have other, you know, examples or yeah. instances yeah. when Father V.C. Samuel, you know, yeah. something came up and you felt yeah. that that is what Father yeah. V.C. Samuel had in mind? <laughs> yes. Share something to on plant that? a tree, what we do, we take the seed or the or the sprout of that seed with the, some sap, some soil there. Mm. It will be uh, attached to the to the roots, there will be some soil with that. Mm. We take it and plant in our soil. Mm. We plant in our soil, and that seed grows. That tree grows. That that. So Christianity was born in Palestine, Jerusalem, some in the Middle East, someplace. Mm. Already, it has got its own cultural background. Yes. Jewish, uh, Greek, everything. Yeah. Some of the roots are there with Christianity also mm. and we have to implant the seed in Indian soil and the roots have to grow deep grow deep to in the Indian soil mm. we have to adopt Indian architecture Indian music we have to develop Indian music or actually the word Syrian is used with the name of our church Malangara Orthodox Syrian church why because we have adopted the Syrian liturgy, Syriac liturgy. Mm. It is the most ancient liturgy in the world. It is not owned by the Syrian people. Mm. No, it is the common heritage of Christianity, Syriac liturgy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to adopt it. But Father Samuel proceeded to think, you have to develop Indian tunes. The music must be Indian, in the Indian method, Indian Fakti Ragams. Mm. Indian architecture, uh, Indian way of expressing, but there is a, a difference of opinion about how far can we go to that. Right. About right. that, there is a difference of opinion. Right. About the cases of something, some people are uh, uh, not agreeing to avoid the word Syrian. Mm. Father Samuel, now there is the word Syrian, but it is come of age, just come of age. This the time is ripe. Now we have to. Uh, make the church fully Indian. Yeah. Just the posture of my, uh, Father Samuel. Mm -hmm. We have to seek Indian soil to grow the plant. Yeah. Some some philosophical concepts also we can adopt from that. Mm -hmm. Up to what extent? There's some there's some difference about that. But in all respects the church should be Indian. It was his argument. Yeah. He said to me, personal talk, I know this church fathers the world church fathers, I know their spirituality, their life. It has attracted me, but but the Indian cultural background, philosophy background is also worth, it's also deep. Yeah. We can get something from that background also. Yeah. Spirituality we can also uh, use that up to a certain extent. Yeah. So that was the vision of Father Samuel. So yeah. I, from yeah. what we, I, I know very little about Father V.C. Samuel, for me also it's a learning process, yeah, it's yeah. an ongoing process. Yeah, yeah, uh, so, yeah. I, my understanding is that Father yeah. V.C. Samuel always used to have this, yeah. Yeah. Uh, an Indian identity to yeah. the Orthodox or an Indian Orthodox Church, yeah, as yeah, specifically yeah. saying that way. Yeah. What do you think was the no. main reason yeah. why yeah. Father V.C. Samuel's vision that did not go through or that did not come to say a better 
Yeah. Uh, it did not, you know, grow up or yeah. it did not, you know, mature enough in the change. Yeah. What do you think? To adopt an idea from other other people, some some people hesitate to that because they are on prejudice. Many people are prejudiced about that, right. about their faith. Other people, what our authorities will think about that? What the official church authorities will think about that? We have some uh, obligations towards the bishops, the synod, the common faith of the authorities of the church. They are hesitant to make a sudden change. Yeah. It may affect their position, the litigations to affect that. They hear. Yeah. Again, nobody in the church has the scholarship that Father Samuel had. The academic scholarship. He studied in Russia, sorry, so in America, in different universities. It's very interesting, his personality. See. After his marriage, after one or two months, he went to America for research. He sent his wife to Tadaga Masarma at Koyambatu. <laughs> you stay there. And she was uh, interesting to stay there. Yeah. Tadaga Masarma, in that monastic background. Yeah. He went to America. I think he came back from America after four or five years. After the research. After completing the research. He was very keen to research for the church. For the edification of the church. The church must be... Um, um, must get used for that for, with my uh, my research, yeah, that for the benefit all. of the church. Yeah, it is all for the benefit. Of the church. Not for my own benefit. He could have remained there, getting a big salary there, and uh, he avoided so many job opportunities there. Yeah, he was keen to research, study, study, study. He was such a person, passion towards uh, scholarship, yeah, to academic. Uh, academic depth he wanted to uh, in the course of time see, some more things I want to uh, you see I was appointed lecturer uh, we could meet together you know discuss many many things I know the heart of Father Samuel um, the academic excellence of Father Samuel and he many things for the church many things he translated many liturgical portions from Syriac language, from other languages, from Greek, or this, some Bible portions he translated to Malayalam. Okay. And uh, also he created some, some prayers, developed some prayers with originality. He made some prayers, his own prayers, with his spiritual mind. Yeah. It's okay. a contri original contribution. Mm -hmm. I think some of them are still available uh, with the Kony Center. Yeah, uh, Kony Center. It is kept there, some of the uh, materials there. Mm -hmm. He prepared some prayers. He translated many prayers. Even he translated the Holy Kurbana. Uh, he knows the original language, Greek, Hebrew, Syria, everything. So he knows the, the, the crux of the liturgy. Yeah. And uh, by this time, uh, I was made the principal of St. Paul's Mission Training Center after a few years. Okay. I came back from Kotein. I lived in Mavini uh, I spent one year in Delhi Diocese there. Uh, I had some personal uh, difference of opinion about my plan with Mark Gregorio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He wanted me to stay in Delhi and develop the Delhi Center, Delhi Orthodox Center. Uh -huh. In its beginning time, at the beginning time, okay. he wanted me to go there yeah, and develop it and have international relations to develop uh, that all these things. But with my personal uh, background, I, I was uh, I got married at that time. Mm -hmm. Deacon Matai remained an unmarried priest. He became priest. He continued in Rome for some time. Later, I visited Rome and we had a life together. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. right. And uh, I became a married person. And Mark Gregorio was not satisfactory with that. Okay. I became a married priest. <laughs> no, he was not very happy with that. And also, uh, I hesitated to remain there for a long time in Delhi. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was teaching theology. Mm -hmm. Father Mathai returned to Kotaim. He uh, he was uh, 
appointed lecturer at that time in theology department. Okay. I went to Delhi for one year. Then, then I was uh, called back to Maavedi Kera to be the principal. Mm. It was by Marostathius. Okay. I was also dear to him also. Okay. And I, may, I, I was made the principal of um, uh, Sastangota. Sorry. Then after that, Sastangota Bible School, Bible College, I made principal by, uh, by Kadurikos Matthew II. Marostathius made me uh, principal of St. Paul's Mission Training Center. Uh, correspondence continued with, Mar uh, with uh, Bishop, uh, Father Samuel, Bangalore, uh, Mavarikira. I made a residence of Mavarikira. I resided at Mavarikira. We had correspondence. At that time, you know, Swanu Havaydil, you know the book Swanu Havaydil by Father Samuel. Mm -hmm. His autograph is there. Swanu Havaydil. In our conversations and um, correspondence, he has discussed with me many things he included in Swanuho Vedi. Some of his bitter experiences with Mar Gregorius and all that. Mm -hmm. He has explained many things in that okay. openly, mm -hmm. clear. Yeah. Do you do you have these communications with you? I mean, is it, is no, it in a letter form? Much of them was oral. Yeah. Okay, it was oral. Only a few letters I have with me. Only very few. Okay. In course of time. Now it is 40, 40 years, 35 years already. Correct, it is, yeah. it is. Some lost. I think some of them are still alive, still still there. Uh, if you have that, that would be a nice, the, thing, nice, nice thing. Archive. Yeah. Yeah. From the heart, uh, we were very near Father mm -hmm. Samuel. I respected him as a guru. Okay. He uh, loved me as a son, as a spiritual son. Yeah, everything. And you see, again, mm, I, I have written so many books. Now it is already 30 books I have completed, both in Malayalam and English, 30, three Who series. Who publishes your books? Yes. Some of them were published by the seminary. You know, the yes. Divya Bodhanam project, you have yes. heard of that. Yes. There is two books in that, in my book. Okay. Veda Shastra Vidhiyo, Vidhi, mm. Introduction to Theology in Malayalam. Mm. Thinking about God in English, yeah. Veda Shastra Vidhi and uh, Thinking about God. These books were published by Kottayam Seminary, yeah. Some of my books were published by Bible College at Shasta Yeah. Okay. Some of my books published by CLS, now CSS, Christian Literature Society. Mm. Yeah, based CLS. Tiruvalla. Based in Tiruvalla. An ecumenical organization. Some of my, my part, book about patristics is published by them. Some, some literary works. I have written a book on the literary people of Russia. You see, Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, uh, uh, like that, Pushkin, uh, Lermontov, in Malayalam. Okay. I have collected, I have visited the, the places related to these uh, literary people, yeah, in different parts of Soviet Union at that time. Okay. I visited their tomb, I spent time there. So is it is it yeah. sort of a, um, yeah. an essay on those people? Essay on those people. Okay. I will turn a book, that book is called Russian Sahityatila Navaratnangal. And the foreword is written by Dr. Subhumar Adikor to that book. Oh, okay. To that book, I, I have written it. Russian Sahitya Thera Navarat Nangal. I have an interest in literary uh, field also, you see. Sahityam, literature. Literature. Okay. And my book is there. Uh, Russian Sahitya Thera Navarat Nangal. Dr. Subhumar Adikor wrote foreword to that book. Okay. I can show that. I have not brought now, you see. It's my ho house okay. there. It is published by uh, Jeevan Publications near Mahavirikira, Chunakara it is called, okay. by some literary people. They have published it. Some have, uh, they were published by, with my own initiative. I have started a publishing uh, project, Hagios books. It is called the Hagios books, book series. The word Hagios in Greek means sanctity, holiness. I give importance to sanctity. Holiness is important, not academic stability, no. Not intelligence not depth, mm -hmm. not our head, our devotion, spirituality is important. Sanctity, holiness is the mark of orthodoxy. Holiness and worship, the matrix of theology, form the matrix of theology. Holiness is important, spirituality is important, not our academic capabilities. 
Yeah, it's an interesting thing which you said about that, yeah. Father, because uh, right now in this world, you know, yeah. th- there is a there is a lot of focus wow. on wow. knowledge, yeah. Yeah. And gaining, gaining knowledge, knowledge and knowledge. understanding yeah. knowledge. And knowledge, it seems, yeah. is the end all, know yeah. all yeah. sort yeah. of yeah. A thing. Yeah. 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 So when the, yeah. the orthodox uh, yeah. philosophy on, on that is not the most important right. thing. It's a very different. It's a very we different have practice. to acknowledge human limitations, limitations of perception, limitations of conception, mm-hmm. limitations of articulation, how to express, limitations of interpretation. We have to acknowledge our limitations. Right. At the same time, we have to try to reach out. Mm-hmm. Theology is not teaching out something. Mm-hmm. Anybody can teach right. without life. True. Theology is not teaching out. Theology is reaching out, mm. reaching out. The Orthodox theologians call it the process of theosis, mm. infinite growth in goodness. Mm. That growth is necessary from glory to glory, right. growth in glory to glory. We are created in the image of God, but we have to grow up from glory to glory. To glory. Yeah. This is called pleurosis, the perfectness. So our our journey of theology or spiritual growth is from kenosis to pleurosis. Kenosis means self empty, mm. humiliation, self empty, sacrifice. Right. A growth from kenosis to pleurosis, theosis, growing up, gradual development. You have to grow up. So theology is pleurosis, reaching out. Mm. Yeah, you have to grow up. So there is limitation for our intellectual capacities. Every knowledge is from God. God has given us epinoia. The word epinoia means special capabilities to know, to work for science, technology. All these fields belong art, artistic skill. All these things are given by God. The grace of God, gift from God is called epinoia. Gift from God. Mm. Everything is the blessings. Grace from God. You have to acknowledge it. Our limitations. And then it is called in the language of theology, learned ignorance. Learned ignorance. Arvinda naravile elima. Arvinda naravundaga elima. Learned ignorance. Father Samuel had the learned ignorance. Ascetic attraction. His approach was ascetic. Though he was a married priest, his presence was that of a hermit. Ascetic person, spiritual guru. I felt it. That presence. Mm. That's a difference. Some of them are academicians. Mm. The intelligence I, I could understand, grasp. But from Father Samuel, I grasped the ascetic attraction. Although he was a very Always married, yeah, a family he was man. Married, he was a very intelligent, intelligent man. Intelligent man. Such, yeah. a, such a scholar he is. Yeah, that is very important. Ascetic attraction. Learned ignorance. Mm. That is. Uh, Eastern view of uh, spirituality. Mm. So he was attracted by his personality, his thinking pattern, and all that. By this time, uh, I have got some acceptance as a writer, mm. as a conventional speaker, mm. uh, as an orator. Uh, used to be, I was very, very uh, with a heavy schedule, and I got three awards: my award, a Danish award for the best theological book. It was given by Patanaburam Asama, my mm-hmm. Dionysius Award for the best theological book in Malayalam. Then I was awarded with the Dishana Award, Dishana, mm-hmm. for my with, uh, overall contribution, writing and speaking and all that. Dishana Award. Then Ecumenical Leadership Award. I spent some time in America, uh, attended some ecumenical conferences, contact with others, and I got Ecumenical Leadership Award from New Jersey. So the three award I got. Then again, for the last ten years, I am the chairman of Father V. C. Samuel Ecumenical Study Forum. Okay. There. They asked me, you you said you are the best person, be the chairman of this. <laughs> okay. You know, Mr. Vargis is there. Yes. Some so you work with Mr. Vargis as well. Yeah. Me. And uh, <coughs> the the family gathering of Father Samuel. Mm. Very often they invite me to attend their family meeting at okay. Koni, at, at Koni Church. Uh-huh. The, uh, their relatives come there. I speak they uh, deliver speeches. I think at least once in once in a year I go there. Go there. I okay. meet these relatives there. 
I explain something about his writing, some some things about at Samuel Essen's contributions. Mm. So I do, there was speech there. Mm. Some two years back also I went there. Mm. With Corona effect, I could not last. Yeah, I could not last year. So still I am continuing as the chairman of the uh, Father V C Samuel Ecumenical Study Forum uh, with headquarters at Pune. Mm. We have to develop it gradually. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I know you, you, you talked about it and if, yeah. you, if I were to ask the question, yeah. what would be the key things yeah. which if you were to list down say one, two, yeah. three yeah. things yeah. Yeah. or if you just say okay, one or two things, yeah. what is the greatest contributions of Father V.C. Samuel yes. to the world yes. as yes. well as to yes. the yes. Indian yes. Orthodox Church? Yes, yes, yes. Father V.C. Samuel, as I see, you see, I have mentioned that uh, he's my teacher. He is my spiritual mentor and also he is my um, guide, guide in theology, Christology and patristics. Guru, spiritual mentor and guide. Yeah. He was a man of academic excellence, we all know. At the same time, he was a man of spiritual depth, we know. He was a man of God, a scholar. He had a prophetic vision. The church in the next millennium or in the next century, a prophetic mission in the future, foresight. Mm. He had foresight and farsight. Foresight means historical approach. Mm. Farsight means something to happen in the future, mm. a vision, prophetic vision. He had some prophetic vision. Yeah. A man of simplicity and accessibility, I have mentioned about a polyglot. He knew so many languages, languages in depth, yeah, a yeah. polyglot, a philosopher. I remember he wrote a thesis on the philosophy of Dr. Ravakshana, uh, something like that. Indian philosophy, he wrote a thesis on Indian philosophy. Mm. On uh, Philosophy was his area, an important area of study. An authority on Christology, we all know. He was an authority on religions, religions. He knew the essence of Hinduism. Mm. Essence of Buddhism, mm. world religions, he was very near to the world religions and also church history, Indian history and world history, he was an authority on that. He covered many areas in his research, yeah, all these areas, Buddhism, Hinduism, Semitic languages, Hebrew, Greek, Amharic, in Ethiopia, he was a scholar in Amharic, he wrote many things, many articles in Amharic, yeah. okay. he was the principal of Ethiopian Academy. Theological Academy, yeah. He tried to heal the Christological controversy, the, the healing the differences. Yeah. In 2000 years, he was the main person to come out from the Orient Orthodox Churches to say, this is our position, this is the correct position. Yeah. The uh, Orient Orthodox position, he clarified it. the importance the of the, the calcium. He uh, pointed out the differences of opinion the terminological difference, mm. all these things. His most important contribution is in Christology. He tried to heal the Christological differences between the Eastern Orthodox Churches and the Oriental Orthodox Churches. Yeah. He explained the terminologies in the Christological formulae with clarity. The formulae in the councils, in the ecumenical councils. He was familiar with the local councils in the east and in the west, yeah. He was the one of the main architects of Vienna consultations, you know. The unofficial Vienna consultations between the Oriental Orthodox Churches and the Byzantine Orthodox Churches. He was one of the main resource person for that. And it, uh, which years were there? Yeah. Those happened, any idea? Then, in the 80s. In the 80s. In the 80s. Okay. There are available, all the materials are available. Yeah, yeah. about the Vienna consultations. Father Gilmer was there, Father V.C. Samuel was there, Christology, Mark Gregorius was there, uh, scholars from Coptic, Syrian and other Byzantine churches, Greek churches, all the, this assembled there. Yeah. Mm. And there were talks with, uh, in other consultation, Roman Catholic Church and the Orthodox churches. He was the main architect of that also. That answer. Yes, yes. Yeah. Again, his research paper was on Buddhism is widely appreciated. appreciated. He wrote a paper on Buddhism. Yeah. His book, The Council of Chalcedon Re-examined, is used for research around the world. We can see that book 
in different parts of the world different libraries around the world true many people are using it for their uh, doctorate degree yes. phd thesis referring it in their bibliography they are using it yeah his books truth triumphs this is about what asir triveni yeah yes written a book on truth triumphs triumphs yes about about the freedom of the indian independence of the indian church the freedom struggle of the indian church which is something very close to that's <laughs> hard yes yeah <laughs> what is there there many support much for the church you know for the freedom of the church mm-hmm. he had many enemies in the patriarch side and many other sides yeah but he fought it he was a man of prayer yeah. he was the main architect behind uh, the the bharana ghatana the constitution of the church what is there there many took a main part for that okay all right it's about also father samuel emphasized the inner independence that means uh, about the rule self rule of the church self head of self the church must be autonomous what does it mean also had the vision the church must be autonomous autonomous means self rule yeah. not a foreign domination or foreign rule right. autonomous autonomous means self rule yeah. autocephalous the church should be autocephalous in greek the word kephali means head the head of the church who is the head of the church not not a foreigner our own head self head so he fought for that what does it mean is also fought the, for that self rule self head to maintain the autonomy of the church and the autocephaly of the church and what does it mean he attracted for for samuel very much mm-hmm. so he wrote the book also again the pain behind the life of our patashet the sacrifice yeah. the tears in this life mm-hmm. the tears actually theology means the blessed tears the tears i have a personal experience with the father confessors of the russian church <laughs> the father confessors were gurus great gurus like father sosima the character in uh, the stimsky's writings father sosima an ideal com- uh, father confessor so many people come to uh, seek advice from him the people should stay outside the church each one entered the church mm-hmm. then the first process of confession tears blessed tears rendu peru engal idichu kari ee kumbasara pidavu kumbasari karikkana vyakti vyakti ee rendu perum kuda engal idichu kari as a preparation for the confession that the, as a two hour of the confession for 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes i have seen that you can hear the voice mm-hmm. voice of repentance the tears to have a spiritual rapport between them then the counseling starts the prayer starts the confession starts the importance of blessed tears so what does he to remain in was a man of tears was a man of prayer a man of sacrifice so father samuel was attracted by the life of what does he to remain in so he uh, wrote the book truth triumphs truth will triumph at the end some uh, crises are there mm. uh, to overcome the crisis surely the ultimate uh, victory is for the truth so samuel achan wrote it again he wrote aadhunika bharata sabha again he wrote sabha valarunu the church grows that's a textbook under divya bodhanam sabha valarunu again his autobiography swanubhav vedi so some criticism in it in malayalam open criticism <laughs> again some some practice of the church dogma of the church swanubhav vedi <laughs> yeah again again they are widely used to by theological students and spiritual organizations his book on catechism is an authentic writing on orthodox theology orthodox faith yeah book on catechism you cannot forget that right dr mrs samuel was a world leader of ecumenism we cannot say he was indian leader of ecumenism no a world leader of ecumenism he was a member of the faith and order commission of the wcc for uh, tens and tens of years at least 20 years i think he was the 
member in the Faith and Order Commission of the WCC, World Council of Churches. A very long time. He was the main resource person behind the Lima document, an official document of the WCC, Lima document. It was formed in Peru, Lima in Peru. Peru. Uh, Lima document means it was, uh, or it was uh, created in Lima conference. And Father Samuel was the main architect behind Lima document, an ecumenical document um, connecting all these faiths, but uh, affirming the faith of the church, affirming the un undivided church, he was open to ecumenism and uh, he formed a, a, a document, Lim it is called a Lima document. Then, Achara, yeah. what we will do is now we will take a break, yeah. it's been an hour. Yeah. We'll take a break yeah. and then we'll continue, continue. again. Yes, okay. Right? Okay. okay. So we're just going to stop here. So we'll start. this yeah. is part one. Yeah. We'll stop.